Hey guys, it's Stephanie with Simmerkey and welcome to my tutorial series. Now, just to put a disclaimer out there, some of these tutorials are gonna be super basic for a brand new Simmer and some are gonna be a bit more advanced for someone who's been building for a while. And today's tutorial is gonna be a very basic, just how the heck do you build? How do you build? Some people don't know. So we're gonna start at the very, very, very first thing you need to do, which is, well, I guess this is the second thing you need to do. The first thing you need to do is buy a plot of land. By default, the game pretty much guides you on how to do that. Once you have this plot of land, what the heck do you do? If you haven't moved into a pre-built house and you wanna start from scratch, well, the first thing you need to do is click on this little tool up here, which is build mode. Yes, super simple to get started. Now I click this little button up here to change the daytime or nighttime or afternoon, morning. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. By default, it puts it on morning. So I like to change it to afternoon because it's just a little bit brighter. Now the next thing, or I guess the first thing, this is technically the first thing you do, is you find your walls. So you click, click, click on this little house here that says build. And if you click on the wall, it'll give you walls. If you click on the doors, it'll give you doors, etc, etc, etc. So it's got it all nicely laid out for you. So I'm going to click on a wall and there are a ton of different options here. The first one is the wall tool that lets you just freely draw walls wherever and however your heart desires. The next one, I'm just hitting undo here to go back. The next one is our room tool. And this, of course, are square or rectangular rooms. You just click and drag it to whatever width or height that you want. Well, I guess the width to change the height that's a little bit different. Now, by default, it changes the view or it has, it has, I can talk, it has the view with the wall cutouts. I personally don't like that when building. So I'm going up here and I'm clicking on my wall cutaway view. You can click it once to have all the walls up again to have them all down and then again to bring them back to the default cutaway. But again, I like I like my walls when I'm building to see exactly what I'm doing. And to change the wall height, you're gonna click on the arrow, which is just your select tool, click on the room, and there are three little blocks here. There are short walls, medium walls, and tall walls. So if you click medium, it'll bring them up a bit. And if you click tall, it'll make them even taller. Personally, I always build with the short walls. I think the medium and tall ones are just, I don't know, I guess they're okay for certain builds, but for me personally, when I'm building inside and decorating and furnishing, I hate having super tall walls, so I keep them short and simple. Now, I called this a room. It's a little bit different from The Sims 3. Uh, if you are a Sims 3 builder, just moving on to The Sims 4, and if you're brand new, this should be pretty easy to understand either way. The Sims categorizes rooms as rooms. So I can click on it. It'll highlight the entire room. I can move it by clicking this move tool here and dragging it wherever I want. If it's turning red, that means that it's off the grid. You have to build inside of the grid here. I could just move it. I can click these two little squares on top of each other, which is the copy tool and make an exact copy of that room to place it next to it or on top. To move up, we have these arrows up here in the top right hand corner to go up or down for the floor. So if I wanted to take this exact room right here and copy it on top of itself, I would copy now that I'm on the second floor, I can just click and put it on top of itself right there. So that's great if you're building really uniquely shaped rooms and you want to keep building up by the floor. Um, I guess I should probably also tell you about all of the tools and menus up here. I might like bounce back and forth. This is gonna try to be a very in-depth tutorial and also very basic at the same time, if that makes sense. But I wanna just show you as if you had never built before. So in our interface, we have the select tool again that lets you click on something and select whatever you like. Next, we have the eyedropper tool. This will only work with objects. For example, we have a mailbox by default on the land. We can use the eyedrop tool to click on the mailbox and it will copy it. So we can just set it down and place another one, copy it. And a lot of objects, when you set it down, it'll only place one and then that's it, it exits out. If you wanna keep placing the same object over and over, for example, if you're landscaping, you'll use the eyedrop tool and before you click to set it down, you're gonna hold the shift key on your keyboard. And now when I place the mailbox, it still has another mailbox. So I can just keep holding shift and putting 8,000 mailboxes if your heart desires. And as soon as I let go of the shift key and place one down, it will not copy it again. 
<laughs> so that's a handy little tool. Um, next is our design tool. So almost every single item in the game can be redesigned in a different color. They are preset colors. So if I click on this and then I click on an object such as the mailbox, it's going to give me three little color swatches. Sometimes there's more, sometimes there's less, and you could click whichever one you want to change the color. Now there's another way of doing that as well. I'm going to go ahead and use my eyedropper key here again to pick up a mailbox. And before I click to set it down, if your key keyboard has a numeric keypad off to the side. Okay, it's the separate keypad. It's not the one on top of the keys. It's off to the side. Uh, I'll try to show you here. My keyboard has a numeric keypad. Now there is the, what is it? Plus, plus and minus. I hope you can see that because I can't see myself right now. <laughs> and before you set the item down, if you hit the minus key, it cycles through the colors one way. And if you hit the plus key, it cycles through the colors another way. So you can do that to check out your different color options before clicking to set the item down. That's another way to redesign the colors. Next is our sledgehammer. And this one is pretty self-explanatory. You can click on any item and delete it. And since we have so many mailboxes, let's get rid of some of these. You can also click on an item and and drag your mouse before releasing it and it'll highlight and delete everything that it highlighted. Next is the undo key. So let's say, oops, I accidentally deleted all my mailboxes. I want to. I don't know why you would want to, but you could hit undo and you could get your mailboxes back. And you can also hit redo so that I can redo the deletion. Undo, redo. Again, pretty self-explanatory. Now, next on the user interface, now you always want to go back to your select tool when you're trying to do something else. Trying to go back to the main, the main selection tool. Make sure you click that arrow again. Now, let's say I want to upload this beautiful house, which I haven't built yet, to the gallery or save it to my library. That's what the next little icon is for. So you can save the lot. It'll save the entire lot directly to your library. I'll go over this again maybe towards the end or in another tutorial in more depth. Or you can click this little cloud with the arrow, an arrow down on the left hand side of the menu to upload it to the gallery for anyone to see. Otherwise, you can just hit the save lot to my library and I'll just save it to your own library on your own computer. And then you can also save just a room. So for example, um, even though this isn't technically a house, we do have two separate rooms next to each other. Technically, there's three. So this is a room, this is a room, and this is a room. So let's say we just wanted to upload one of these to the gallery. You just click on the one that you want to upload, click on this little folder again, and you're going to go to the bottom one. Before it wasn't... Um, before it was grayed out because we have nothing selected, but now that we have a room selected, we can save just the room. And again, the same same situation here. You can upload it to the gallery by clicking the share room to gallery button, or you can just save it to your own personal library by clicking the save room, save room to library. Uh, you can edit here and say what type of room it is, uh, enter a description, all that good stuff. <laughs> all right, so now that we know Everything on the user, well, wait, no, we don't know everything on the user interface. I lied. There's a few more buttons. There's the move lot and house. So let's say I built this house and all of a sudden I decided it's way too close to the front. I don't have room to put stairs and landscaping. I want to move the entire structure to the back or to the side. You can go ahead and click this little move lot and house. And the first option is to... Well, actually, the second option is to move the entire lot. So now the entire lot is highlighted. Again, you can rotate it to the left and to the right by clicking these. You can move it. Let's say I just want to move it back a little bit. Now I can put it anywhere I want. Let's say I just want to set it back a bit. And then you can hit the check mark to confirm. So that's to move the entire lot. Now the other option was to just move the house. So let's say I just wanted to move the house and I didn't want to move all the landscaping. I would click on that and then I would click on the house I want to move and move it there. Now it counts these as separate rooms, so keep that in mind. It's only considered a house if they're all touching each other. So I'm gonna undo that. I'm gonna go back to my select key, and let's say I move this room so that it's touching this one. Oop, I'm on the wrong floor. We have to be on the right floor. Let's undo that. <laughs> We're gonna move down to the first floor. All right, I'm gonna click on this room. I'm going to move it next to this room. Now I'm going to go over here and click on this third room and we're going to move it next to this room. And now, now if we go back to the move lot and house and click on the house, since they're all touching, we can click on it and move it as an entire house or we can rotate it left and right. Well, hold on. We're, we're back a little too far. That's why it's turning red. 
we could rotate it left and right. My 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 camera is going a little bit crazy here, but anyways, you, you can you can figure that part out. Um, now go back to our select key. Let's say I don't like this at all and I want to start completely fresh. I can bulldoze a lot by clicking this. It says, are you sure you would like to bulldoze a lot? Building will wipe the lot clean. You will not be able to undo this action. Okay, or cancel. I'm gonna say okay, let's get rid of everything and start fresh. Now there are a few more things on the user interface up here. If you wanna go back into live mode, you can click the little people. If you wanna go into the gallery to check out your own library or the public gallery, you can check, uh, click open gallery. And again, we went over those arrows. You can go up and down to the different floors. We went over the wall views. And then there's the camera controls. Um, by default, it's set to the Sims 4 camera, but you can actually click on one of these to change it to the Sims 3 camera. It's just, it, you can look up, um, or maybe I'll do an entire tutorial on this if you want as a separate video, but you can look up the key differences. I and a lot of builders and players prefer, this, prefer the Sims 3 camera. You just have a little bit more control. And you can also do a top-down view from here, which you can also do by hitting T on your keyboard. So for example, um, if I wanna rotate my camera to look all the way on top, I can actually rotate my camera Oh my gosh, we'll have to do camera controls in a different tutorial if you want to see that, let me know. Uh, or if I'm at any level, I can just hit T on my keyboard and it'll take me to the top view. Or again, well, we can exit to get out of that. Oh no, how do we get back? Ah, I don't know how to get out of the top view. Oh, you hit T again. Okay. <laughs> So that was the keyboard shortcut, or you could simply click on this box up here to take you to the top view, and then click on this box again to take you back to the regular angled view. Uh, there's also rotate the camera left and right, which you can do on your keyboard by hitting um, the comma or the period. But if you're holding an object sometimes, let's say I'm holding this mailbox, if I hold the comma or the period, it rotates the object, not my camera. But let's say I wanted to put it over here somewhere and the angle's just not right. So what I can do is I can have the item selected and then I can click on, you know, the camera up here and rotate the camera while I'm holding the item still. Otherwise, it'll just rotate the item and not the camera. I hope that made sense. This was something that bothered me very much when I first started building. I couldn't figure out how to hold an item and rotate the camera. There was no way I was stuck. I was stuck left or right or up and down, but no rotating. But that's how you just click on these little arrows. So now I can hold the item and rotate the camera at the same time, or I can just rotate the item. Uh, I, like I said, I really, really hope that made sense. And then these two, I don't, well, I guess I kind of use these. This one is the notification wall. Um, it just kind of tells you what's been going on in your game. You can go through and read the screenshots you saved or whatever your Sims are up to, or you can delete them. You can delete all. I might as well delete all. I, I seriously never read those. And then the last one is how to get to your menu. You can save, save as to give it its own special save name. You can go into your game options, etc. This isn't really anything to do with building. I just wanted to kind of go over all of the uh, interface so that you guys have an idea of where to start. So now we're gonna go ahead and click on this mailbox and delete it. I can either use the sledgehammer like that, or I can literally just click on the mailbox and hit delete on my keyboard and it'll disappear. Now to undo that, Let's say I didn't want to delete it. I wanted to move it to my family inventory. Let's say we were moving to a different lot or I just wanted to save it for later. You can click on it and hit backspace instead and it'll move it to your family inventory. Now your family inventory or your household inventory is right here on the menu and it should theoretically be in there. It might not. I don't know if it actually works with mailboxes or I, I, I that might have been a bad object. Let's try a different one. I'm just gonna, I don't know. Let's put a counter here. Now I'm gonna click on the counter and hit backspace. Okay, there you go. I guess you can't put mailboxes in your family inventory. So now we have our counter in our family inventory. We can pull it back out to use it. Or if we undo that, we can click on it and we can sell it right from the inventory. So I think that's pretty much all of the basic things besides your actual build menu, which is down here on the bottom. If you click on the house, this is gonna take you back to the wall tools and everything that I showed you at the beginning, um, your wallpaper, your trees, your fountains, terrain paint, you kind of hover over it and it tells you what it is. Underneath the house, you can uh, uh, also search objects by room. So if you click on this, it's gonna show us kitchen, 
And then within the kitchen, you can click on cabinets, you know, fridge, it'll show you the fridges, microwaves, it'll show you all the appliances, uh, small appliances, etc. And then, you know, bathroom, bedroom, same thing. You could click on the bed, the dressers. That's if you want to find something quickly and you know what room it belongs in. We have our living room, dining room, uh, study, kids room, and outdoor stuff. So, you know, we have outdoor seating, outdoor cooking, etc. I don't use this very often. I prefer to search by function. So if you click on the chair down here, you have a drop down menu and you can show all, which will literally show you all of the objects in the game besides the building objects, which are technically, you know, the trees, the walls, the doors, that's considered separately. Um, but this will show you all of the furniture and objects that you can place down. And you can scroll through. I don't know why you would want to show all unless you were going through a very specific pack and looking for something. Or you can just pick by function. So there's comfort. And then this breaks it down into more categories. So we have living chairs, dining chairs, desk chairs, couches, love seats, etc. And then you can keep going down this drop list and finding whatever you want. You can go to surfaces. And again, you can either show, well, actually, you can do coffee tables, dining tables, etc. Or you can click this show all button down here, which will show you everything in that specific category. So this will show me all of the surfaces. Or I can just click counters, just click desks, just click shelves. And there's a whole bunch of different categories here. This is what I personally use when I'm looking for items. And of course, there's a search feature as well. So this little box that says search, you could click on that and type whatever you want. It isn't very, very um, intuitive. So for example, if I typed in, I don't know, trying to think of something that wouldn't pull everything up. Like if I typed in Oh, I can't think of any examples. Let's just type anything. Let's just type in flower, okay? So it'll give you some pre-written, <clears throat> excuse me, some pre-written options to click on. So let's say you want the flower power and outdoor lights or you want the splitting flower fountain. You can click on those and it'll take you there. Or what I do, if I don't know exactly what item I like, I'll just click flower and then here do text search for flower. So it's gonna bring up any item that has the word flower in it. So let's say for example, what I was trying to say before, let's say this is a, it is a spitting flower fountain. Um, if it didn't have the word flower in it, it wouldn't come up. So if you were looking for, oh, I can't think of an example. I'll think of an example later, but basically it doesn't work for every single word. Sometimes the word just is different. So if I wanted a spa, you know, that might not necessarily bring up the hot tubs, see? But some people call hot tubs spas. Uh, if I type in hot tub, I don't think it actually brings up a hot tub. I think you have to type in jacuzzi. Let me, let me see. I don't even know. It, it's a good feature, but it's not very comprehensive. So jacuzzi didn't even bring up the hot tubs. I don't know. That's why when I want a hot tub, I just click on the um, objects by function, go to my drop down menu. I'm going to click plumbing and then I'm going to click on tubs and then it's going to have all the tubs and hot tubs. I hope that made sense. This is so hard to do a tutorial. Oh my gosh. I thought this would be easy. We haven't gotten even into the building yet. So uh, the last one down here is the household inventory. We talked about that already. So let's go, let's go way back to building. I know I went through all of the menus for you guys. Hopefully that was helpful. Again, if you're brand new to The Sims, this should be very helpful. And if not, thanks for bearing with me until we get into the actual building tutorial. So you can build using a wall, just like this, a room by clicking and dragging. You can do a custom shape. So instead of, um, stopping and restarting, you can drag, click, drag, click, drag, click, drag, click, drag, click, and draw whatever you want. I don't use this one very often, but that is an option and you do have to complete it to make a room. Uh, next there is the basement tool. So let's go ahead and bulldoze this to get it all out of the way. We can build a basement by clicking the basement tool and dragging it. Again, this will make a square or a rectangular shape and you don't see it. You have to use this floor down, go down to lower floor to get down to the basement. So that's how you build a basement. And then this tool is the custom basement tool. Again, instead of doing a square or a rectangle, you could draw. Let's say you want a basement shaped like that instead. And then when we go back to page down, you will see that shape that you just drew. We'll do uh, an in-depth 
basement tutorial in another video. I'm going to just hit undo now so that we're starting completely from scratch. Now there's also some pre-built rooms that you could just click and set down. So if you want a triangle room, you could just click this and set that down. And then you can click on the arrows to drag it whichever way you want. It's kind of pull and play, pull and play just like that. Now, of course, it's not a triangle anymore. So I'm going to undo that till we get rid of it. There is a square if you want to just set down a square room, an L-shaped room, and an octagonal room. Again, I personally don't use these. I just use the wall tool to build whatever I want. So if I wanted a square room, I would draw a square. If I wanted an octagonal room, I would draw an octagonal uh, shape just because that's easier for me to see what I'm doing. Now, I made this one wall too long, so I can either use the sledgehammer to delete it or... I can actually, since I'm already in my wall tool, hold down the control key. And when I retrace over that wall, it's going to delete it. Okay. So I can draw it without holding control or I could delete it by redrawing it while holding control. And then that way I can keep making my uh, octagonal room here that I was trying to make before I messed up. <laughs> All right. Next, I'm going to bulldoze this lot again, starting over. Nice, nice, fresh, clean start. We have our flat shapes. Now these are good. Oh my gosh, this is a little bit more advanced, so I'm not going to go super in depth with these, but you can just do a flat shape without any walls. It'll consider this a room still. So again, there's L shape, triangle, octagonal, square, and the only way you can do curved anything in the game is with the flat curved uh, space room thing. You can't build curved walls, but you can build curved fences. So if I click on my fence, I can either place fence by drawing, place fence by dragging out a room, or I can replace any existing fences or walls or wall shapes with fences. I personally like to draw, so I'm going to click on that one. And then if I go this way, oh, actually that doesn't work with the curved one. Never mind. With the curved one, you have to hit the um, replace fences. And then that way, just when I hover over it, I can click down and it'll turn it into a fenced in portion. So again, you can make fenced in flat shapes and fl uh, not fenced in rounded flat shapes and rounded fenced off shapes, but you can't do rounded walls. I don't know if that made any sense. <laughs> the walls will not go around. The walls don't go around. Okay. So there, because uh, that's a little bit more advanced, but you have all these shapes here you can play with as well. Um, or if you want to place them down with enclosures already, you can pick the one that already has the fencing around it and it just comes with this basic fencing here. All right. So those are all the different shaped rooms. Um, there's also a square diagonal room. I don't know why that's not up here with the square room, but this room tool again will let you make a square or a rectangle. But if you want it at a diagonal, you can hit the diagonal room. Well, I'm trying to place something over something else and it'll give you a diagonal room or you can just click on your wall tool and freely draw diagonals like that. Um, again, I have an extra little wall here. I'm going to hold control on my keyboard and delete it that way. Okay. So that is all of your basic tools that you need. We're going to go ahead and bulldoze this lot again. And I guess, you know what? I might, hmm. I might make this two separate tutorials. I think I'm going to go through and show you all the other things that you can do and then a basic, basic way to build a house. And then we'll do a separate tutorial with just tips and tricks on building houses. So we won't go through all of this, all of these menus again. So let's say we're, I know I say so a lot. I'm so sorry. Oh, I said it again. I'm going to grab a room tool here and I'm just going to drag it out to a basic shape. And now I want to put a roof. So I'm going to hit my, go up to the next floor and I'm going to click on the roofs and we have all our pre, pre, shaped pre-designed roofs for us. This is the only way you can roof. You can click on the gabled roof, which is more of a triangle. And then it has all these crazy arrows and stuff you can click on. Um, the arrows drag it left and right, or this top arrow drags it up and down. And then we also have these little I guess you would call them half arrows. Okay, so here's an example of the camera control. If I try to rotate my camera while holding the roof, it's going to rotate the roof. So instead, I'm going to click my camera controls and rotate my camera. 
so I can get a better zoom in here. These little half arrows change the overhang of the roof, okay? So it can make it hang longer or you can make it shorter and get rid of it. The arrows on the bottom of the roof do the same thing with the overhang um, that goes downwards instead of, uh, I'm really bad at explaining, so I'll just show you. So you can get rid of this overhang or make it longer by clicking on these. And then this little circle here lets you manipulate the shape shape of the roof. So if I click it and go downwards, <laughs> it makes it look like that. And if I click it and go upwards, it makes it more rounded. And you could just click it very slowly to drag it exactly where you want. Now we have an extra manipulation point. Again, this is a bit more advanced, but if you hit shift and C on your keyboard, it changes these two manipulation points. So now this one will let you change the shape of just the top of the roof. And this one will let you change the shape of just the middle of the roof. So you can make really cool, interesting shapes with these. Uh, you can play around with them. I'm not very good at them. Other simmers are much better, but that is the way to change your different roof shapes. And I mean, that would work for a little cottage or something, right? <laughs> it's kind of tall. So I would again, click on this arrow and just drag it down a bit. So I'm going to get rid of this roof completely just by clicking on it and deleting it. You can also have used the sledgehammer and we're going to go on to our next roof, which is the hipped roof. And this one is just sort of um, squared off all the way around. There's no, there's no gableness to it, I suppose. I don't know much about roofing, so <laughs> we'll delete that one. Um, next is the half gabled roof, which is pretty self-explanatory. You can put them like this. I don't know. I don't use these very often, but let's say you wanted to have it instead of being completely rectangular, let's say you wanted it to be sort of flat on the top. You could then build another room in between these. Well, let me use the room tool. Build another room in between these, and then you could put a flat roof on top. I'm going to page up. I'm going to grab a flat roof or a hipped roof, I guess and drag this across it. Now it's sort of glitching into itself. This is where the really creative roofers know how to do much better than I can. Um, but I'm gonna get rid of this extra overhang here and this extra overhang here. And I guess these extra overhangs here and try to create a roof shape. So it's, it's not the prettiest roof, but I mean, there's a different way of doing the roof. <laughs> so let's sledgehammer all of this away as well. We'll get rid of the roof, the room that we created and move on to the next shape. Um, I'm not gonna go through every single one of them, but you get the basic idea. There's uh, hexagonal roofs, octagonal roofs. Again, just place them, drag them wherever you want, and you could use the manipulation points to sort of make them round or curved or whatever you want. <laughs> There's also diagonal roofs. Uh, let's keep this one super simple by doing a gabled roof. It is the one that I use the most. And again, I'm just gonna drag it. Oh, I'm on the wrong floor. You see how I'm on the wrong floor, so it's floating. We're gonna undo that, make sure we move page down to the right floor. And there we go. There's our gabled roof. Cover the room nicely. I'm going to click on it, find this upper arrow and bring it down a bit. I just think they're too high. They're usually too high. All right. So we're going to make a very basic, basic house for today. We'll do another tutorial with a more advanced house. Next, you're probably going to want some doors and windows. So you can click on your doors here. And depending on your wall height, you can pick short, medium, or tall doors. Since we have me, uh, short walls by default here, we can't select any of the medium or tall walls. So we can click on the wall, make it medium. And now we can have access to all the medium doors and we can click on it again, make it tall. And now we have access to all the tall doors. I'm going to keep it short and simple and just pick a nice door. We have single doors and we have double doors. I usually always use a double door. Uh, I don't know why. I just usually always use a double door for my front door. Next, you're going to want to do windows. Oh my gosh, you see how this isn't symmetric? I personally like symmetry. So we have one, two, three panels on this side and one, two, three, four panels on this side. That drives me nuts. This door is a two tile door. So instead, I'm going to find a double door that's a three tile door like this. So now I have one, two, three panels here and one, two, three panels here. But now that we have our door, we're gonna move on to windows. So we're gonna click on our windows over here 
And the same thing, you have windows for short walls, medium walls, and tall walls. And you can just click on any window that you want as long as it's for the right wall height and place it down. Let's get something that matches a little better, maybe something like this, and just put it wherever you want. Now windows, you can move up and down on the wall as long as it stays on the wall and not the roof, but you can't move them left and right um, in short movements. I don't know if that made sense, but for example, if I set this here and I wanted it a little bit to the left, I would have to move on to the entire next tile. But if I wanted to move it up, I can hold Alt on my keyboard and slightly move it up or down without having to move an entire tile. Okay, so that's how you can do your windows. Now, this is a little known fact, but you can also do auto windows. So let's say we get rid of this window here. Um, by default, you place a single window or you can click on this little room here and do windows by room. So this whole house is considered one room. You'll know that again by clicking on it and it highlighted the entire house, so that considers it one entire room. So now, if we click on a window and we set it down, it doesn't like that window, let's do this window. It doesn't like that window either, oh my gosh. Okay, there we go. So now if I sit down this window and I have auto window by room, window by room, it now placed a window at even tile placement throughout the entire room or house. So if I had a separate room attached to here, it would have only done it to that first part. Let me let me show you so it makes more sense. Let's undo that. Let's build a room off the back of here. So it's still technically a whole house, right? We're gonna copy this roof, place it on top and shorten it. Okay, so it's still technically one house, but if we go back into the windows, and we place them by room. Uh, doesn't like that window now. And we use this one. It only put it on that room. So if we want the exact same window on this one auto placed, we can also click the window again. And now it auto places it all over that room. I don't use this feature because I am a stickler for symmetry and balance and I just want to be able to place the windows exactly where I want. But if you don't want to think about it, you can do it just like that. So I'm going to go back to placing windows by window, not by room. And you can just keep going and building. Um, again, I'll just show you a super, super simple house here. So Let's say we do want to put it on foundation. You could click on foundation and you can raise it so it's super high <laughs> or you keep it lowered so it's super low or anywhere in between. And now the property is raised on foundation. The only issue I have with this is if you wanted to build another structure, let's say you wanted to have a gazebo back here. So you went into your walls and you grabbed an octagonal room to make a gazebo. The gazebo is now also going to be on foundation. There's no way to make part of the property on foundation and part of it not on foundation. And that works the same with the walls. So if this wall is medium, every single wall on that floor is going to be medium. And then if you had a second floor on top, you can make that a different height. But everything on the floor that it's on is going to turn to whatever height you select. There's no way to have the gazebo be short and the house be tall. So let's go ahead and get rid of the gazebo. Let's move our walls back to the short ones. And whoops, I didn't mean to rotate that. Okay, so next we can go ahead and place a set of stairs. So we're going to click on stairs, but we don't have a porch for it to go onto. So it won't go directly in front of the door unless it creates like this separate little um, platform which is fine, you can do it like that, but personally, I like to give it a little porch. So I'm gonna delete the, uh, the stairs. I'm gonna go back into my walls and empty rooms. I'm gonna grab my flat square foundation because I don't want walls, and now I created a little porch. So now I can make the porch smaller by clicking and dragging, and this time when I grab my stairs and place them down, it can either create that additional little platform, which looks a little bit funny, or you can click on it and use the move, the move tool to slide it into the porch that we created. So now it's just stairs onto a porch. And the reason I prefer that is because you can go ahead and build a little fence around it and make it look like a cute little porch. I'm just dragging it like that. Uh, again, if you didn't want to drag it, you can 
do the uh, replace fences and it'll just automatically place it wherever a fence would go if you just click on that side of the foundation. All right, and then you can add a little bit of a railing to the stairs as well by clicking on the railing, find something that matches, and it'll automatically put it on both sides of your stairs. Now, it's it's the shape of a house, right? But we're lacking a few things. The first thing we're lacking is wallpaper. So by clicking on this wall pattern, right here on the side of the house. It's gonna bring up all your different patterns and they're sorted by paint, uh, wallpaper, tile, etc., miscellaneous, or you can click show all and I'll show you every single wallpaper that you have in the game. And you can either place this by tile like this, like we did with the windows one at a time. Well, that's not a good color that doesn't show up very well. Let's use yellow. Or you can click by room and when you have that clicked then when i place down my yellow it's going to make this whole room yellow and then if i wanted to make the back one blue i would change it to blue and it's going to make this whole room blue okay so there's by room or by what do they officially call it by wall by one wall tile now another way to do that is if i go back to wall tile where i place just a single one let's do what color here Let's do maybe purple. I can place one down by clicking or on my keyboard, I can hold the shift key. And by holding the shift key, it's gonna make the whole room have that wallpaper. And I'm gonna undo that. You can also hold the alt key and the alt key is just gonna make that entire wall the color. Now it's counting this as three different walls, even though it looks like one wall to us, because it's considering this different rooms. It considers this a room, it considers this a room. Let me show it in a different wall so it makes sense. I went back to plain yellow. So uh, we don't have a porch on the side, so it's not gonna be super complicated. You can just, by default, click it. It'll take up one tile. You can hold shift on your keyboard. It'll make the whole room purple. I'm going to undo that. And again, you can also just hit alt and it'll just make that wall purple. So it didn't change the entire room, just that wall. All right. So uh, this house is starting to look crazy. I'm going to make it all yellow. So I'm going to get my copy tool. I'm going to copy this yellow wall. I'm going to hold shift. So it makes this whole room yellow and this whole room yellow. Let's go way back, way back rain it in a bit. <laughs> All right. And now the roof, you can make a different color. Um, you can make it the exact same pattern as you want, or you can, let's say, go into paneling and maybe make it just a different type of roof. Uh, it's totally up to you. That is just a personal choice. You can also change the color of the roof. So by default, it comes in this like beige color. But if you click over here on roof patterns, you can actually change it to any one you want. We have shingles, we have the cor corrugated castle, uh, we have gravel, we have the eco luster composite roof. <laughs> There's a bunch of different ones and they usually come with different colors as well. So we can make, <laughs> this is looking like a crazy house, but we can make a blue roof. We could do this one, we could change it to white all different type of roof patterns and the roofs are each individual room. So you would have to change them individually. Uh, you can make them both exactly the same or you can make them all different. So next would be, oh gosh, what is next? Roof trim. There's a bunch of things you can play with. Um, there's columns, there's all sorts of things, but to keep it super simple, let's just pick a roof trim. Uh, this beveled roof trim is my favorite. It's nice and thick and it jets out a lot. So let's say we wanted the roof to match the windows. I would find a nice deep dark brown color and just click on the roof and it will turn that into a trimmed roof. And you could do the same thing on the one on the back. There you go. Uh, there's thinner ones, different colors, of course. So if you wanted a thin pink roof trim, you could do that and just play with all of your different options. Okay, I fixed the house so it's not looking as crazy. Um, just change the colors up a bit. Now there's also flooring. You can click right here on floor patterns and I don't know, pick a basic wood uh, or tile or whatever you like. And uh, again, you can click it just to place it on one tile like that or you can hit shift to cover the entire room. Now it makes them go um, vertically. If I want them to be horizontal, I would hit the 
comma or period on my keyboard and it'll rotate it. So if I want it to be horizontal and then I hold shift, it'll place it down on that entire room. Now the foundation has its own separate wall covering. So if you click on the foundations down here, it's going to show you the different options. Um, and again, those have different color swatches as well. So let's just do, let's just do some stone. So I'm going to click on that part and it counts each room again individually. So we'll have to change the foundation on that room, that room, and this room to make it all match. All right, now I'm not going to go through every single category, but you can go ahead and continue with your landscaping. There are trees, there are shrubs, there are flowers, all different categories here, and there are pools, fountains, there's terrain paint, so you can go ahead and pick a different paint color here and make maybe like a stone path. Um, if you want a pool, you can click on a pool. We'll go into the backyard here and you can do uh, just a basic shaped pool. There's a bunch of different options. Again, I'll make each one of these their own in-depth tutorials. And that's going to be it for this video. I, I just wanted to show you all of the different options, how you can go through, select different items, and start building a house. So if you missed anything, you can definitely go back and rewatch it, of course. Or if there's something that I didn't cover, you can absolutely leave me a comment and I will make sure to clarify it for you. Again, I tried super hard for this tutorial. I hope it helped. It's very hard to go back to basics when you're used to doing this type of stuff. So if I miss something, I'm really, truly sorry. Just let me know and I will cover it for you. And if you want something a bit more advanced, again, let me know in the, in the comments below and we'll take care of that in another video. Guys, if you had fun and you learned something new, make sure to subscribe. I will be posting a ton of tutorials. Plus I build all the time. So there is no shortage of Sims videos on this channel. I will see you guys next time and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye. Wait guys, before you go anywhere, don't forget to click over here to watch new videos and click on my face when I disappear to subscribe.